In this video, I shall provide an introduction to administrative law. And in particular, the purpose of having this uh, lecture video will be to discuss and explain the role of administrative law, the relationship between the separation of powers and administrative law, the scope of administrative law, principles and values of administrative law, the boundaries of administrative law, and uh, to talk about the special issue which involves the private and public functions divide. So let's begin by uh, talking about why administrative law is actually important to you. The thing is, we need to realize that each day, government decisions, particularly the decisions of the executive, actually impact our lives each day and regularly. And the role, therefore, of administrative law is to seek to limit and regulate the conduct of government in its dealings with us. So let's uh, focus, uh, let's go deeper into the issue of what exactly is administrative law. Administrative law is actually the body of law, rules, practices, and institutions that controls and regulates and enables persons and corporations to challenge and seek a review of government decision-making and action, particularly the executive branch of government. It, can, it has also been more broadly characterized as the area of law that focuses on the executive branch of government or the administration, and is involved in constraining and controlling the conduct of governors in their dealings with their government. So the focus really of administrative law is to provide an avenue by which persons and corporations may actually seek to limit the powers of executive government. Because when you think about it, the executive government wields enormous coercive powers which impacts the lives of people each day. We can actually see the involvement of and the impact of administrative law in our daily activities by looking at these examples. It can involve administrative law, can be invoked in relation to applications for licenses, such as driver's licenses or firearms license or building license to renovate a house. So in other words, when you make an application for these licenses and the government turns you down or fails to make a decision on your application, then you can invoke administrative law to be able to test the decision or the failure to make a decision by the executive government. It can also uh, relate to the registration of motor vehicles or the applications for passports or visas, even the adoption of children. It also involves uh, the registration of births, deaths, and marriages, the registration of a person's change of name by deed poll. It could also be invoked in relation to business registrations or in terms of applications for unemployment, child support, state housing and other social security or taxation benefits. So in, the, in, in these instances, when the, government make, when the government makes a decision or fails to make a decision, or the conduct of the executive is something that can be questioned because it fails, for example, to follow the rules of natural justice, then a person who is aggrieved can then invoke administrative law in order to question the decision or non-decision or even the conduct of the executive government. So looking at the importance of administrative law in society, without administrative law, it would be difficult for individuals to challenge and seek a review of government decision-making in action. Chances are they'd have to go through judicial proceedings. But as you will observe, apart from uh, ad administrative law providing a judicial review of improper cases of administrative decisions, these decisions can also be challenged through uh, the administrative tribunals, through what is known as a merits review, which is a review process focusing on the merits and the factual background of a decision having been made. And uh, merit reviews, for example, are quite fast, quick, expeditious, less technical, and they're also less expensive. So going back, if you look at uh, the role of administrative law, we 
we can see that it is actually the avenue by which uh, there is an intervention by law between the executive government which enforces the law and the people or the governed who then have a mechanism for appeals to tribunals regarding the implementation or enforcement of the law. And it enables, therefore, the protection of the rights and interests of individuals and corporations when they deal with government agencies. And it also provides a mechanism for accountability and external check on executive decision-making and action. So if we look at uh, this figure, for example, we can see that the executive government is tasked with the enforcement of law and executive decision making. And on the other hand, you can have the governed, meaning the citizens or the people and corporations, who then have an opportunity to appeal to tribunals regarding the enforcement of law and executive decision making. And that there in the middle is administrative law, whose function is to regulate the enforcement of law and executive decision-making. 